receive a blessing. Amen for just being here. Praise God. Uh, uh, the snow was good. I hope everybody enjoyed it. We were blessed because we didn't have the power outages. A lot of people did. So uh, we was blessed in this area. Praise God. Good to see everybody. We're going to uh, move right along here. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Remember, we have a baptismal going on next Sunday night. Uh, Dwayne, isn't that right? So if anybody wants to be baptized in water, please see Dwayne or Lindsay. And there's a sign-up sheet back there in the back, so be prepared to, uh, to sign up and get ready for that. So uh, anybody want to be baptized in water? And so we're looking to see what the Lord's going to do this morning. Amen. I know he's going to do something because he said we're two or three together. I am also. So we know he's here this morning. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what he's going to do. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a couple of things we want to uh, 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 get involved in this morning before the service starts. Uh, we got the uh, Chosen Fuse ministering down. Their band is ministering down in Anderson this morning. We pray God will bless that group they're ministering to this morning. So, uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we praise you this morning. We worship you, God. We pray, God, that you come in like a mighty Russian wind and have your way in this service, God. God, anoint the preaching of the word this morning and the praise and worship in a mighty way to glorify and to uplift you, to edify uh, your body, God. Uh, we love you and praise you this morning. God, touch the internet folks, God. We pray you'll bless them for being with us this morning in a special way, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem this morning, God. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, give our America wisdom and knowledge uh, and, and as we back and support Israel the way we spoke to God in Jesus' name because you've blessed this country so much because of that, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We praise you this morning. Touch those who are not able to be here this morning. Uh, touch Teresa, Lord, she's sick. Uh, I lift her up to you, God. You'll touch her body and just heal her, God. And, and others not being able to be here this morning, just touch them in a special way, God. Heal their bodies, Lord, and just let them be refreshed uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, anoint the praise and worship this morning. Anoint the preaching of the word. Anoint the preaching of the word tonight uh, and the praise and worship to glorify and lift you up, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Just have your way this morning. We submit to you. We surrender to you this morning. Holy Ghost, have your way in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Sister Jeanette. Praise God. I have the greatest honor this morning to be able to do something that uh, probably should have been done a long time ago, but um, I think God's timing is perfect. I think everybody else knows that, that loves Jesus. But um, I would like to ask... Um, better known as BR, but I'd like to ask Brian Slagle if you would come up here and stand and that your wife, Thelma, would stand beside you. And I would like for the board, the rest of the board members, to stand on this side of me, if you will because this is a unanimous decision of the board without you today. <laughs> this is a certificate of license. This certifies that Brian Slagle, having given evidence of the call of God to the gospel ministry, is licensed to preach the gospel, perform marriages, administer the sacraments and to direct the other functions of the ministry and is hereby awarded this certificate by Liberty Ministries Church International Greenville South Carolina brother BR I want to say a little just a little something about him we give all praise and all glory to God but there are certain qualities and character um, parts about people that that we watch and uh, all of us do, but I just want to say this about uh, BR. I've watched you clean the toilets. I've watched you fix the toilets. I've watched you scrub floors. I have helped you on the floor myself put down tile, and I have watched him do all kinds of work in paint and do things that nobody ever sees him do. And to me... The Bible talks to us about that we are supposed to be a person of good character. But not only that, 
you have to be faithful in what you're doing, what you're called to do. And he was faithful in everything. He has been faithful in everything he's, he has done in this church. And I know I'm probably embarrassing him. He's probably going to give me a spanking after church. But the Bible talks to us about faithfulness. And that's where we receive our rewards for being faithful. And he has been very faithful. And I think everybody in this church knows that. And so we have decided that it was time to license the R. Slagle. And uh, I, I don't know, we don't usually do this for something um, like this because when we ordain people, we have, usually have people come in and pray over them, those that are ministers in the church. It's already licensed or, or that are already uh, ordained. But I'm going to ask the church family to come up and to bless him this morning, just to thank him for his hard work and and just bless him as he goes about and does God's work as he continues in his faithfulness to the Lord and to this church. Um, so if you would just put, can you put something on that uh, can play? And uh, I want to be the first because everybody knows he's my son. I call him my son. <laughs> I have for a long time because he stood by me through so many things. Uh, I won't even start to try to uh, remember those or mention them uh, today. But I think everybody knows. And um, I know if you need something done, you call BR. And, uh, so <laughs> and, and if he can't do it, Thelma can. So, <laughs> so anyway, God bless you, brother. And I, I love you like a son. Bless you. Yeah, okay. Check. Check. BR is officially, I forgot to mention this, but he is officially our youth pastor in this church. So call him pastor if you want to. I think he likes to be called BR.
Praise the Lord, amen. Praise God. We just, uh, it's an honor to have BR uh, as a team. He's been here a long time, him and Thelma, we love them. And uh, by the way, uh, the youth is growing over there. There's been uh, uh, several youth saves over there in the last couple of weeks. So y'all can continue to pray. God's moving in the community here and touching hearts and lives. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's praise the Lord just a little bit and see what he has for us uh, this morning. Well, my piano player is out. Russell uh, got her sick. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, you know I want to go to heaven, see the streets of gold and the crystal sea. Well, and Lord, you know I want to go to heaven, see the mansion you built for me. There'll be no death, there'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain when you get up there. There'll be no tears. There'll be no crying. All the former things will pass away. When I Lord, you know I want to go to heaven. See the streets of gold. And the crystal sea And Lord You know I want to go to heaven And see the mansion You built for me I want to see Jesus In all its splendor I want to see God And His glory too I want to see my family that's gone before me and all my loved ones that's a coming to when I Lord you know I want to go to heaven and see the streets of gold and the crystal sea and Lord you know I want to go to heaven And see the mansion you built for me I want to see Jesus in all its splendor I want to see God and His glory too I want to see my family that's gone before me and all my loved ones that's a coming to when I Lord you know I want to go to heaven and see the streets of gold and the crystal sea and Lord you know I want to go to heaven and see the mansion you built for me and see the mansion you built for me praise god hallelujah who wants to go to heaven this morning well i want to tell you in god's word he promises that and i want to just hold him to his promise don't you amen hallelujah <laughs> praise god Oh, Lord, my God, when I am all 
some wonder Consider all Great things Thy hands Have made I see the star I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Shout the acclamation and take me home. What joy to fill my heart! Then I'll bow down with humble adoration and then proclaim, My God, how great thou art! And sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Thou art when Christ shall come, which has of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I'll bow down with humble adoration. And then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sing, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sing, my soul. Your God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Yes, he is. Then sing, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sing, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. How sweet to hold. A newborn baby And feel the joy And pride it gives But greater still The calm assurance The child can face uncertain days Because he lives because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth. The living just because he lives. Then one day I cross that river, I'll fight life's fire. No war will vain. And then as day gives way to I see the lights of glory and I know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know future and life is worth the living just because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone Cause I know he holds the future And life is worth the living just because he lives And life is worth the living just because he lives Hallelujah. Praise God. Life is worth the living because he lives. Amen. <clears throat> I want everybody to get comfortable because God loves you. We got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. We got lights uh, shining real bright today and we got uh, heat in the place. Hallelujah. We got shoes on our feet. Hallelujah. 
y'all to help me out with this song. Watch these ladies. Praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. Praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you shake off those heavy bands? Lift up those holy hands. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you shake off those heavy bands? Lift up those holy hands. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you shake off those heavy bands? Lift up those holy hands. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you? Shake off those heavy bands Lift up those holy hands Let all the God's children praise the Lord Why don't you shake off those heavy bands Lift up those holy hands Let all the God's children praise the Lord You know, I love that song. I, we've done it in prisons many times, and the inmates really get excited because they can shake off those heavy bands. And they can be set free before they leave that prison yard or leave that prison chapel that night or that day. You know, I think about it a lot of times that there are bondages that we have sometimes. You know, there's sometimes there's things on the inside of us that we don't even know is in there, deep down, rooted inside, and we haven't really dealt with it and and so i'll just have to say this week and and you say the pastor yeah this week i was in my kitchen and all of a sudden i thought of something and and the lord said are you mad at me about that and i said oh no lord how could i be mad at you and it it just like that he just reached down and and just took that out of me it was something I hadn't thought about in a long time. And it was just, you know, but there are things that's inside of us that we do need to be freed from. There's times when when we get hurt and we put that way back, way back on the stove bay or on the shelf and we don't deal with it. But there are traumas that cause people to get into health problems. There are traumas that happen to you as children and adults sometimes that it's just hard for you not to think about a lot. But this I hadn't thought about a lot. It just kind of came on me. And so I sat, stood there in my kitchen as the Lord delivered me from that, from within. So I'm just saying to you this morning, we've got a lot to thank the Lord for. We can shake off those heavy bands and we can lift up our holy hands to him this morning and you can say, my hands are not holy. Oh, yes, they are. You're a child of God and he's made you that way. And so let's just, if you can stand up, okay. If you can't, it's okay. I don't have any problems with that. But let's just do this again, Ricky, and let's just shake off those heavy bands. If you can bring anything to your mind, or you, I would like to ask now the Holy Spirit, if you just bow your heads for just a minute, close your eyes. Holy Spirit, if there's anything that's in anybody's spirit or in their heart or deep down within that they haven't dealt with in their lives, Lord, something that's painful to think about and something that's, that has really been on their mind a lot or maybe hasn't. 
And I pray now that you would just bring it to their remembrance now. That they can shake off those heavy bands this morning and know that if it's anything they've done, you have forgiven them. And if it's not something they've done, if it's something someone else has done to them, and, and they may think, God, you could have stopped that, and you didn't. I pray this morning that you would just deliver them from that. And I pray, God, that they would just search their hearts. And Holy Spirit, just bring it to their remembrance and bring it up and then bring it out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let's try it again, praise God. I tell you, it's good. I've seen it work mighty things in the prison. Them guys come in all beaten down and trodden down in the world out there, and they start praising the Lord and lifting your hands a little bit and just shouting a little bit. I'll tell you what, it releases uh, uh, those things uh, uh, that, that's there that needs to be released. Amen. Start praising God and rejoicing. Enjoy yourself. Amen. In the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. De -de -de -de. Praise the Lord. De -de -de -de. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you shake off those heavy bands? Lift up those holy hands. Let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you? Shake off those heavy bands Lift up those holy hands Let all the God's children praise the Lord Why don't you shake off those heavy bands Lift up those holy hands Let all the God's children praise the Lord now give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. He's a mighty God. Amen. One I didn't see lifting her hands is Sister Cheryl. She's not lifting her hands over here. She got her hands full of a young one over there. <laughs> She's legal. <laughs> Don't it feel better to praise God and worship God? Amen. I tell you right now, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Praise God. Don't want to even try it either. <laughs> I'm going to ask some ushers, please come up. Who has the special? I had it up here, and it's not here. Where's it at? Donna, you got it? Come on up here, sister. Praise God. You going to be able to do it? Amen. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, Lord. And Lord God, we just ask you to uh, help those people that don't have no power and all in, in the lower part of the state, Lord God, and just help those that's down there trying to get it back on. And Lord God, just bless these tithes and offering you and uplift your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. <laughs> it's an honor to come in his house and praise him and worship him. Amen. Just to be with him. Hallelujah.
Sister Donna. the Lord see if I can get some of these off amen you got your Bible and you want to follow along with me this morning I pray you still love me you know I have to preach what God tells me to preach amen uh huh everybody laughing a little bit we might get our shins knocked around a little bit this morning but I'm here to tell you it's for a reason God loves us so much and he's concerned about his children and he wants to see his children grow and prosper in his word amen 
And, uh, you know, that's one thing the Lord keeps pressing on me uh, to preach on a lot is get in the Word of God and grow. When you become a Christian, guess what? Uh, when you first become a Christian, you're a babe. You get that milk. And that milk gives you the fundamental basic things. Uh, you start growing in that and getting what God wants you uh, to grow in. I remember uh, I, I, when I really got on fire for the Lord, uh, man, I'm telling you, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and for about two years, I could not get out of God's Word. I just continually was digging in God's Word and getting a, uh, getting a foundation of His Word so I could go forth and do some things that He wanted me to do. Amen? And we as Christians, when we get saved, uh, I, I'm just going to tell it like it is this morning because God told me to, you know. We as Christians, uh, uh, some of us, when we get saved, not all of us, some of us, when we get saved, we sit back there in the pew, and 40 years later, you're still sitting back there, and you hadn't grown none. You're still where he is at, uh, and you just uh, sitting back there, and God wants to use you. God got things for you. He wants you to be strong in the Lord. I'm here to tell you this morning, you better be strong in the Lord, and you better know what your fundamental uh, beliefs are in the Lord Jesus Christ, because you may be challenged uh, uh, with that belief at any time the way the world's going right now. You better be prepared. And what God uh, uh, asked me to minister on, uh, told me I'm, I'm his, amen. I obey him. Told me to minister on this morning is uh, uh, some people are dull in hearing him. Oh, you ever been there? I have. I've had wax in my ears and couldn't hear. I still can't hear good. But uh, praise God, it's getting better, I hope. I'm praying, you know, God's uh, moving there. But I'm here to tell you right now, God's telling us this morning, I'm, we're going to look at some scriptures about that. Some people are dull in hearing what God has for them, dull in hearing, and be honest with you, they just get lazy. They're not getting in God's Word, and His Word speaks to you. His Word talks to you, and you grow. Now, let me ask you this. What happens when we was a babe and we got to, uh, uh, taking that milk? We started growing, didn't we? We started getting nourished and getting ready so we could eat what? Meat. Boy, I like them steaks, don't you? I love to go by one of them steakhouse and smell that robust uh, charcoal grilled uh, beef. A uh, smelling. Oh, oh. And my honey says, we can't go there today. <laughs> well, I'll show you. I'll get me one cooking at my house. <laughs> but I like that meat. God's telling us, you know, we're supposed to be on, as babes, they some Christians that just got saved, they own milk. They should be on milk and grow fundamentally the basic things uh, uh, of God's word. But I'm here to tell you, after uh, a certain amount of time, you should start growing out of your Baby steps, I'm a Christian, uh, oh, I said a cuss word, or I'm trying to do right, I'm getting sanctification here. It's ongoing always, you know. As a babe, you might do some of those things, but after you get out of that growth uh, thing and you get up and you start walking, you know, isn't it amazing? I was watching a man walk down the road the other day that humans can get up and walk like we do. Just stand up right after we become a baby and crawl around and while they're on the ground and we start figuring it out, we can walk. God's a mighty God, isn't he? That we can do that. But he's telling us this morning, we, all of us, I, I tell you right now, one of my continuous prayers is God help me to hear your voice more clearly. I, I want to hear your voice more clearly. It just thrills me to death when God speaks to me or talks to me or tells me to do something. It just consumes me that he loves me enough to talk to me. Amen? So I just get excited about that. But we're going to look in God's word this morning about uh, dull of hearing. Some people uh, get dull of hearing because... Uh, uh, their hearts have waxed cold. And that happens out there in the world that we in today. We got to stay on fire with the Lord. I tell you right now, I got a fireplace uh, out in my barn out there. Joel gave me his old buck stove when he finally gave it up. And I got it out there at the house, and I'll start chunking that thing up. Boy, if, but if I neglect that thing, it'll start going out. And if I want to stay warm and keep the things going on, I have to keep throwing fuel to it, uh, uh, Th keep throwing wood to it to keep it burning strong. Well, that's kind of like our spiritual walk with the Lord. As you a Christian, you need to keep throwing uh, the Word of God uh, to your uh, growth in the Lord uh, to keep it strong. Amen? And we want to be strong fundamentally uh, as a, a Christian body. And God, let's just look and see some of the Word this morning, what God has <coughs> as far as, excuse me, uh, We'll get into the word here. You know, I, I got a lot of scriptures. I probably won't go through all of them, Ronnie, but I'll go through some of them. Let's look at Hebrews 5.11. And uh, we want to talk about growing spiritually. Now, let me tell you uh, what the word talks about this morning. Uh, let me get in my word here. 
and let's see where it is. He's a mighty. I'm going to be in Hebrews 5, 11 through 14 uh, to start out uh, this morning and see what the Lord says. Look at here in verse 11. On whom we have many things to say. Now, this is old Paul talking, and he's telling uh, some of the Christians that, hey, I, I need to tell you a lot of things and everything, but some of you done got dull in hearing, and you not hearing what I'm telling you. I got to come back and tell it to you again. See, we want to be established in the Word, of whom we have many things to say and hard to utter, seeing you are dull of hearing. You know, sometimes uh, you, you'll hear the preachers or the ministers or whatever preach a, a sermon, and the Holy Ghost knows exactly what the congregation needs. Amen? And uh, you'll hear it preached over and over and, and, and time and time again. I, I, I'll give you an example here in just a minute. I'm uh, ashamed to say, but I'm going to tell it. Some of you have heard it before, but look here. It said, ye are dull of hearing for when, verse 12, for when uh, the time ye ought to be teachers. In other words, you need to grow spiritually in the Lord because God wants to use you. You know, uh, we're praying right here at the church and we got a, a lot of folks that are, are the backbone of the church and they do a lot of work here in this church, but we're looking for more. Amen? Because we want to grow spiritually. We want to see the community touched in salvations even all over the world. We want to see that. And we need more help. So if we grow the congregation spiritually, it's like when I was uh, uh, in my job, I was a boss uh, uh, for a, uh, a time there. And when I did, I tried to develop and grow other people that could take my job so I could move somewhere else or uh, do another job or whatever. That's uh, some of the basic, basic fundamental things you need to do. So we in the church, we want to grow people that can come up uh, and do certain things to make the body work uh, correctly. Amen? So we want to look at uh, some of those things today. And uh, we don't want to be dull hearing. If you're dull hearing, uh, you're not growing spiritually. We want to grow spiritually. I tell you right now, uh, it's a daily thing. You need to continue in God's Word, and you grow in God's Word, and, and the Holy Ghost will help you. Amen? Uh, he will help you grow. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Uh, in verse 12, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the articles of God and are become such as have need of milk and do and, and not of strong meat. Now look at here. <coughs> uh, let's talk about this right here. Babes in Christ. There's nothing wrong with that. When you first get saved, you're supposed to be a babe in Christ. But after a while, you need to start maturing into an adult uh, Christian. You need to start getting some of the word. I tell you right now, uh, I, 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 what is a, a babe uh, taking uh, the milk and stuff? That means uh, a, a babe there unskilled in the word. That's a big, that's a strong thing right there, being unskilled in the word. I'm just going to give you an example. I, man, I've walked some of these things, and I can talk about them. I remember when I, I, I was, some of you heard this before, I was raising my sons. You know, I was raising boy. I'd go to church every Sunday morning. I'd be there. I had it in my heart that I'm going to take my boys to church Sunday morning. But I'm here to tell you, I took my Bible, never opened it, never read it, didn't know much about it. I was one of these Christians uh, we're talking about that was dull hearing God because I didn't open his word and read his word and see who he was. And I would come to church Sunday morning, buddy, I would be there. And, and I'm here to tell you, uh, I'd have my Bible. Oh, look at me, I'm church going here today. And uh, I, I would go home and, and my boys, I'd make them mind in church and do what they're supposed to do, reverence God and everything, you know. That's the way I was raised up, reverence God. And so uh, uh, then I would go home uh, uh, that Sunday evening. I wouldn't go to church Sunday night. I'm done. Everything, I fulfilled my obligation, went to the house of God, didn't open, took the Bible. You know, like that boy told his daddy, he said, Daddy, what's the deal with the dust all over the Bible? It's got dust all over. You don't ever read it? <laughs> but anyway, I took my Bible, laid it down, never read it during the week. And uh, the week uh, started. And man, uh, as the week started, I got weaker and weaker as a Christian and I'd fall back on the other side doing things I wasn't supposed to do. And, uh, you know, I just wasn't strong in God. I, I was dull hearing what he wanted me to do. I know he had uh, always wanted me something to do something. Man, I just thought about it. Look at all the time I wasted. What if I'd got right with God when I was about 12 years old? What could I accomplish for him today? <laughs> but I was hard-headed. Anyway, what I want to tell you is... Uh, I'd go to church, I'd take my Bible, and I'd listen to the preacher. That's good. I heard the word. I went home, throw my Bible down. I didn't really know who God was. I knew there's something in me that loved him, but uh, I just wasn't grabbing a hold of what I needed. I was dull in hearing what he had to say. What the preacher would say would go away during the week because I didn't go to church on Wednesday night, by the way, and I didn't sure didn't read my Bible, and I worked and done all them cares of the world that was going on, and uh, guess what? Saturday night, polishing boys' uh, shoes up and get ready. We're going to church Sunday morning. 
man, I was not growing. I was not growing spiritually. So when tribulation and times come, I couldn't fight it. Uh, I would fall sometimes on account of it. I'm going to be honest with you. When I was living that kind of life, I would uh, love the Lord for six months, and then I drank for six months. That's, that's against God, ain't it? That's not obeying God. He said a drunkard won't enter the kingdom of heaven. But I'm telling you, I had no strength. I was dull hearing God, and my heart would get hard in certain areas, and that's not good. So we got to get a hold of God. We got to grab a hold of God. Give you that as an example this morning. But praise God, 25 years ago, I got a hold of God. And when I did, uh, I, w I was on milk. I'll never forget it. I was on milk and, and going forward in the Lord. Praise God for about two years. I was digging in God's word. And man, uh, I talked to the Lord. And if I'd fall down, guess who'd pick me up? God picked me up. Boy, I'm ready to go again, you know. But after about two years, guess what? God started feeding me meat, and I got strong as an adult. And when that happened, uh, I got solid uh, and, and got in a position God could use me. I started to eat meat. I was capable of instructions for God then because I could hear his voice. Amen, praise God. And I could discern good and evil. I knew what was wrong and what wasn't uh, right. I won't never forget uh, when I first got on fire for the Lord and got saved, you know, I thought, hey, it's okay to drink a beer occasionally, ain't it? It's all right. I'm just using this is what God showed me. It's, uh, I mean, I'm going to eat it uh, with eating spaghetti, like drinking a glass of tea. Well, that's just, uh, uh, to me, uh, I went through that a long time and said, God, you got to help me with this, uh, this, this drinking stuff here because it's not okay. If I'm a Sunday school teacher and somebody sees me drinking a beer, what do you think that does to, to my testimony for the Lord? Or if I come in and teach Sunday school and I got a, one of them shirts on that says some kind of alcoholic beverage out there, what do you think that uh, would uh, uh, testify to the Lord? It wouldn't be too good. I don't believe most of you in here I say most of you, all of you, would not want to hear me uh, preach or do anything, right? That's right. <clears throat> but, but praise God, I got a hold of God and got into the right thing, and God showed me. He spoke to me because my hearing was getting better, okay, BR? Spiritually, not physically. And uh, so my hearing was getting better, and I heard God say, refrain from the appearance of evil. That's what he showed me. A people that's on alcohol, I'm, I'm using it, this is what he taught me. It's people on alcohol living under a bridge. It's people on alcohol who are college graduates and went out and had the world in their hand and everything and alcohol, they got under the bondage of it and it destroyed their lives, their families and so forth. I can tell you, one of my uh, cousins, it happened to him. I watched it happen to him. Had a family, had the best job you ever seen. Uh, had kids and all of that, and alcohol got a hold of him in his job, and it destroyed him. He lost his uh, family. He lost his kids. He lost everything. Finally, they had to put him in the in the jail because he uh, had the DT so bad. His own father, a Church of God preacher, by the way, had to call the law, come out there and take their son into jail. You see what kind of destructive thing that was, and God was showing me that. The appearance. So the appearance is... I don't want to go out there and see a Sunday school teacher drinking uh, a sip and sink going on to you. I'm using this as an example this morning. I know I've been through some of it, but God showed me the truth. Amen. Now, the truth will set you free. And what happened there, I was dull in here, and all of a sudden, boy, I started hearing him, boy. Why? I started reading God's Word and looking in God's Word and studying and reading. It says, don't do that. And what I want to do, what do you want to do as a Christian? You want to obey God, don't you? You want to obey God. So how do you going to know how to obey God and stuff unless you get in his word and he speak through you through that word? He speak through you in different ways. So you get in that word and you study that word, praise God, and God will speak to you and you, your ears won't be dull. Get them, get them, get them, get the wax cleaned out of them. Get right. Uh, let's go a little bit further right here and look. <clears throat> I like this uh, verse as it goes on down here in verse 12. We just seen that. Let's look at the... Uh, uh, verse 13, it says right here, it said, uh, well, uh, uh, it's going, uh, yeah, verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskilled in what? The word. Other words, if you're on milk, you're unskilled in milk. I remember one a time or two when, uh, man, I got my teeth uh, and tail tucked between my legs. I thought I was a man of God, boy. And they don't tell me. And I'm reading God's Word, and I went down there to my family, and I started witness to them, and they told me to get out away from them, blank, blank. Uh, I don't believe in that, blank, blank. I still pray for them, by the way, Mother. <laughs> Not my mother, it's, it's some of my family. And uh, uh, boy, I got tore up. And guess what? I couldn't do nothing about it. I, I cowed down, went out there and sat in my car. Man, I got tore up. I told them. Why? 
I was unskilled, Gary. I was a babe in the word. I didn't have the basic fundamentals of who I am and the power that God's going to give me. And he gives you, amen, praise God. You better know the basic principles of God and who you are and what you believe, praise God, because even your family can chew you up and spit you out if you don't. In other words, if you sit back there and you don't know the word, you just listen to the preacher and you don't open your Bible and things ain't going on at your house and you're not growing spiritually, you're going to have some major problems coming up. You better be ready. Because you better know who you are and why you believe what you are. These people in the world is dying because they believe in the basic fundamentals of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is. They're dying for that. Are you ready to do that? I tell you right now, there's some things coming up on this world you can't imagine. The world can't imagine. I want to be settled in. Now, look here. Now, if you're a baby, you need to grow uh, spiritually. You need to move forward. Look here. And you need to start taking, uh, 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 taking that uh, meat. And what happens there? The first principles of the truth. I'll give you one. What are some of the basic fundamental things you need to read and look at here? I'll tell you right now. You need to know who, uh, the way, and who to pray to and how to do that. That's basic fundamental principle you need to look. Uh, in John uh, 4, 16, I believe it is. Uh, uh, I got it. I know that. Uh, 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 John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. What does that say? I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me you don't get to God no other way but through Jesus Christ. You got to recognize the Son, the King. That's who he is, praise God. And by the way, uh, we got the King in us now when you become a Christian. Now, you got to recognize the basic fundamental thing there. I'll tell you right now, some of the other things you need to learn and get grounded in meat uh, as you grow as a Christian. You know, uh, and when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'll tell you right now, we go forward. That's basic fundamental stuff we're looking at. Let's look a little bit further. Uh, uh, you know, whatsoever you bind on earth, uh, Matthew 18, 18, whatsoever you bind on earth, be bound in heaven. That's some of your strength and power. If you bind the enemy from coming at your family, It'd be bound in heaven too. You need to get on your knees and cry out, God, I apply the blood of Jesus over my family and over my loved ones. And uh, this word says, uh, I believe what it says from the front to the back. Amen. I believe it. Hallelujah. I become one of his followers and I'm going to follow him and obey him. You better know who you are. Now let's go a little bit further. Let's look in Romans 10, 9. What if your family come up to you and say, hey, I want you to uh, leave my uh, 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 son or daughter to, the, to, the, to Jesus Christ. Can you do it? Can you do it? Now, you can do it. You can say a prayer and ask Jesus to come in heart. You can do that. God made it simple. But let's get in and see what God's Word said in Romans 10, 9. If you confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ that he was uh, uh, crucified on Calvary, that he was buried and he was raised again, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. <laughs> That's a basic fundamental thing. Uh, you need to get in that. The, the word says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We got some basic things we need to look at. We can tell people, this is what God said, not what I say. Guess what? There's power in the word of God. See, when you speak and talk of the word of God, that's when you become strong in God's word and you're eating that meat and the devil is upset. He's going to try everything he can do to come at you. But he's a liar. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God came to give life and give it more abundantly, praise God. I want, it to, I want all God's got. You know, when I got saved and on fire uh, for the Lord in a mighty way, <clears throat> I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want all you got. Give it to me. Uh, your power, your strength, you, who you are, flow through me. Amen? And I don't want to be dull in here, and I want to be strong in the Word. I want to be so When somebody tells me something, you know, or a spirit comes and talks to me, Oh, is this what it means? You better check that spirit. Make sure the spirit is who he is. Is it of God or is it of the devil? You know, you can test the spirits in, in the little John 4.4. 4, you can look at it and say, Spirit, who are you? Do you believe Jesus Christ came and walked upon this earth? And the spirit says, yes, that's of God. But the devil's spirit uh, deny that. You see? Man, there's all kind of stuff that you got as a Christian that you have power, and uh, some of you don't even know it because you ain't studying and getting in the Word. Oh, my shin got me on the toe that time, preacher. <laughs> you got to get in. Uh, I'll tell you right now. Let's go a little bit further and, and look and see what God's Word says. It's talking about grow spiritually. You know, dull of hearing means mentally slow, and it means a slowful and stuff like that. You know, the fundamental law, we talked about some of it just now. We need to grow. In 1 Corinthians 3, 2, 
I have fed you with milk. And First Peter uh, 2, 2, it's desire the milk of the word to grow. How you going to grow? You got to get the milk of the word. Man, you start growing them babies. Look at them babies. We got some in some arms of the mamas back here right now. That baby's going to grow because they're going to feed that baby milk. And that baby's going to start walking and talking and hollering mom and daddy. And before you know it, uh, that baby's going to want some meat off of that table. Amen. So we as a Christian need to do that. We need to wing yourself off of milk if you've been on it a long time. It's time to get off of it. Amen? Let's, let's, let's look a bit further. Let me, let me ask you a few questions too. And it says in Hebrews 6, 12, uh, let's look at Hebrews 6, 12, uh, Ron, if you don't mind. Be not slowful. We need to inherit the promise. Now, God's promised us, praise God, we get saved, hallelujah. We're going to live with him. Uh, we're going to be with him eternity, praise God. And I can see in Luke 16, we're talking about heaven and hell. It's comfort to be with our Lord, praise God, for eternity. And it's a torment to, to be in the, the devil's clutches uh, for eternity. So, you know, there's a great choice. Uh, and we as Christians have chosen to be believers and to follow him. Let's look right here. That you be not slowful, that means lazy, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Now, what are we going to inherit? We're going to inherit uh, uh, salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ for eternity to be with him. That's one of the promises. I want my promise, don't you? Let me tell you what God did. He promised Abraham, you're going to be like the stars of the sky. Your seed's going to grow. You're going to get this land. You're the co this is the covenant land they're fighting over there in Israel uh, right now about it. You're going to get all of these things, and guess what? Abraham was patient. He endured to the end and he received his promise from God. God has promised us uh, when we're saved to praise God uh, that we're going to be his and we're going to be with him, but he wants us to grow and he wants us to grow. He wants us to grow spiritually because he has things for us to do to make this body function properly. We don't want to be dull here. And I tell you right now, uh, we got to get... Uh, we got to get it and get it on because the time is getting short, y'all. I truly believe that. You can look for all kind of things to happen. I believe even 2014, it's going to be a great year for a Christian. But it could be, and I believe it will be a bad year for people of the world. The economy's uh, setting on edge. It's not doing real good. And I'm here to tell you, you know, we had all of these great snowstorms that we ain't had in years. And guess what happened uh, 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 in Greenville, South Carolina? Why? We're in the Bible Belt, ain't we? So, uh, and some of the peoples of our world and in our country now are in that, not in that Bible Belt. They're getting harder and harder, and they're throwing God out of the schools and doing all that. But we're still in the Bible. But guess what? We had power, didn't we? We had things going on. I tell you right now, you look at the bottom of the state of South Carolina, they went through some terrible times down there. The ice storm tore 68,000 this morning. I've seen still does not have, have power. I've seen in God's, uh, uh, I mean, on the news this morning too, going up the eastern coastline that uh, terrible snowstorm was hitting up there and people were, uh, all kind of stuff was going on like never before, 12, 18 uh, inches of snow. And guess what? They can't work doing that. All of this is going on. The people didn't get to go to the malls. Uh, the malls is closed down. And all of the uh, materialistic things that they all like to get, was uh, they was doing that yesterday. Me and my wife went by there and everybody and their brother was out there. We were going to clean, clean the church. But I'm just telling it like it is. All of that's going on. Also, all of the money that was lost in thousands of people that were flying all over the world, spending that money and everything to do. And I know they got business. Uh, uh, praise God, we do have airplanes. We can send missionaries on count of it. But I'm here to tell you right now, millions in the financial world was lost on account of those storms. Let me tell you what's going on in England. England's having the worst rain they ever had over there. They're having flooding. People's homes are getting flooded. They can't do nothing about it. When the rain does quit, they're going to be flooded out for another month or two because there's so much water there. It's destroying things. And the economy, God has a way, doesn't he? God has a way to bring the people, humanity, back to him. You know, he, he went through with Sodom and Gomorrah and they wouldn't come back to him. They were so evil, he just went ahead and judged them. <laughs> Done deal. And God said in uh, uh, the end times will be like Noel's day. I used to think, well, they're giving him marriage, everything's okay. You know, uh-uh, terrible things was happening in Noel's day. Uh, 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 ungodliness was going on everywhere. Uh, uh, lawlessness was going on everywhere. 
And God said, I've had enough of it. I made the humanity. I'm, I repent that I've done that. But praise God for Noah. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And eight souls was in the boat. And the rest of the souls in humanity was outside of the boat. And they were destroyed. I tell you right now, it's a serious thing. We need to reverence Almighty God. We need to fear God, and we need to get in His Word. Man, He loves you. It ain't, uh, uh, you know, I love my mother and daddy, and both of them used to wear me out, but I love them. They love me enough to wear me out. I like that. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you right now, God loves you too, and He'll, sometimes He'll chastise you for something maybe ain't going on in your life. Why? Because He loves you. You just got to just take it and go on. I've been whooped by God major. Hurts too, don't it, Sandra? I see you raising your hand. Sarah, Sarah's shaking her head over here. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, we don't need to be dull in hearing God. We need to get in God. He has uh, good things for us. Praise God. He wants to exhort and lift his, his body up, the kingdom of God. That's what we're in uh, this morning. Let's look a little bit further. And I want to ask you uh, uh, some questions this morning. <coughs> I tell you, God's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. Look at here. Do you have progress in your Christian walk? Have you got saved and are you making progress? Are you there uh, 10 years ago and you're in the same place you was in? If you are, you need to take an inventory of what's going on in your life and say, listen, I need to correct some things. Some things need to be taken care of. I need to focus on getting closer to God. I want to tell you here this morning, there ain't nothing out there you got or nothing in this world is important is to having a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the stuff that we have out there, he gave us anyway, it ain't going with you when you die. Not none of it. I tell you, the most important thing is him. We need to focus on him. Ain't nothing wrong with having things if you balance things right. There's nothing wrong with that. But you 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 got to have a, a set uh, uh, thing of, of, of what the balance is there. It's got to be. Uh, do you have progress in your Christian walk? You know, uh, adults need to get on milk. If, if I mean, not milk, <laughs> meat. I'm here to tell you, if you've been on milk a long time, it's time for you to grow spiritually and going up. Paul's telling them here, hey, I got to come back and teach you again the basic fundamentals and principles here. You need to know that already. You need to be going forward. You need to not have that dull of hearing uh, that we talked about these scriptures here a while ago. Let's look a little bit. Let's ask, let me ask you another question. Who's going to help you uh, 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 move forward as a Christian? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit, that's where the power's at, amen? And you've got it, y'all. Every one of you that received Jesus, praise God, has got a power. I'm talking about three baptisms right now. You know, when you get uh, uh, saved, you get uh, uh, baptized in the Lord corporately. you in the Lord. And then all of a sudden, next Sunday night, we're going to do it, by the way, BR, we're going to baptize some people in water. Jesus is baptized in water. I want to be baptized in water, don't you? And uh, so that's a, that's a second baptism. Now, if you want some power and authority and go forward in the Lord in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that you can't imagine, then you can go for that third thing. It's called baptism in the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't have time to get in that uh, this morning, but that's what the basic, some of the basic fundamentals are of Pentecostal church is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That gives you power to defeat the enemy like never, you can't imagine like never before. Man, and guess what? When that happens, the devil's going to be scared of you because you got power. Look out. You got power and God gives it to you. Amen. Now let's go a little bit further here and look <coughs> and, and see uh, what God has for us here. Praise God. But you know, dull of hearing, mentally slow or a little lazy. Hey, you know, I'm telling you right now, it's uh, easy to come home from work. I know I used to do a lot and still do. Uh, but uh, I, I, me and my wife, we watch the news and we turn the TV off and we study till it's time to go to bed. And then we get up the next morning and we study and we pray and cry out to the Lord and then we start going our way that God wants us to go that day. But I used to not do that years and years ago. My life changed 25 years ago. I want more of God, amen? I want my ears to be spiritually in tune to what he wants, praise God. And each one of us here need to uh, do that and be ready. I tell you right now, I know sometimes you come home and you're tired, you're beast. Lord, I ain't got, 
I remember one time over in a little church we had this uh, we had this play. I don't know what you call that maze may, or maze or something where they, huh? Mines. Anyway, they had that. <laughs> they had that. I can't hear good, y'all. Forgive me. But listen to this. I'll never forget uh, who who played that. One of the ladies here, I believe it was a uh, uh, Porterfield's wife. She come in and she she come in from work and she was so no no she got up that morning. She jumped out of bed. She started doing all things and the Lord's over here, you know. Lord, I'll be with you in just a minute. Let me cook this breakfast, Lord, and let me get ready and get my hair fixed and get all that done, Lord. And let me get this clothes started right here and let me vacuum a little bit. Lord, I'll be with you in just a minute, Lord. I- I'm going to spend some time with you. Just hang on, Lord. Just, uh, just hang on. And and she kept uh, working and working. All of a sudden, she said, Lord, listen, I got to go to work now, so I'll, I'll see you tonight when I get back. Stole her time. Well, she come in that night. Boy, she's tired and exhausted. She come and said, Lord, let me get this supper done in front of the family, Lord. Let me get them clothes done. Let's get, I'll spend some time with you, Lord. Everything's going to be okay. And the Lord said, when are you going to spend time with me? And she said, I will in just a little bit, Lord. Uh, Lord, just uh, hold on, Lord. Let me get my teeth brushed. Let me get my bath. Let me get uh, uh, the, the things done. It's got to be done. Get ready for kids, ready for uh, I'm using this uh, 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 school tomorrow morning. Let me get that done. All of a sudden, Lord, I'm going to spend time with you, Lord. And the Lord said, when are you going to spend time with me? So she sits down in the chair. Boom. <sighs> Lord, I'll just have to see you in the morning. That's really sad. Because the most important thing for her that day was to spend time with the master. First. That's it, Woody. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Ties. Amen. Been reading it, ain't you? I'll tell you right now. I don't care what life calls for. God knows you have need of food and to take care of your family and all that, but he also knows you've got to spend some time with him or you're going to have some major problems. I, I, I'll never forget that, though. I thought it was best, a good example that I've seen that uh, <coughs> it stuck with me. That uh, and, and I've been guilty. I've been there. I've done it. I've come in totally exhausted, jump up that morning and, and get out of here and, uh, 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 you know, come home at night totally exhausted. God, I'll see you in the morning. I can't handle it. Boom. But I will say this, and I do this because of the power and the anointing of Almighty God. This preacher used to not read his Bible years ago before he got on fire. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost 25 years ago. And ever since that day, hallelujah, I give him the praise. I have never failed to read my Bible every day and to pray and to praise him for 25 years. That's saying something for me, y'all. But I'm proud of that. God and the anointing Holy Ghost have given me power to do that. Except for two to three days, I did not read my Bible in 25 years. And those two to three days, I was unconscious in a car wreck. I don't remember. But I do remember when I first got my consciousness, my mother was there, my wife and my sons and daughter. My arms was all puffed up and swelled up and had IVs. I had stuff in me everywhere. You can poke something in you. I had it. They thought I was going to die. But I'll never forget. I got up. and I, I mean, I didn't get up. I'm laying there. I'm saying, what's going on? What's happening? The first thing I did, I asked my son to come over here and read me the Bible. I had to have something from him. And when I got something from him, I got a peace on me. See what that word to do? <laughs> it gave me what I needed at the time I needed it. Amen. He's an awesome God, y'all. And what he's done for us, we can never repay. Grace is unmerited. You don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But he gave it to us freely through his son, Jesus. The innocent blood for you and I. Amen. That's powerful. That's powerful. Look here. Are you growing as a Christian? Have you grown at all? Keep growing. I encourage you. 
Don't be dull in hearing God's word. Read God's word every day. Make it a point in your everyday life. If you don't read but two little verses, read those verses and praise God and pray for your family. Amen. There's power in it, y'all. Do it. Make a commitment that I'm doing God's word. Some of you here ain't read God's word all week. Shame on you. He loves you so much. Shame on you. I've been there. I can say that. I know. I used to be shameful of that too. God loves you so much. He wants to talk to you. He wants to fellowship with you. I love to fellowship with my mother and my wife and my children. God loves you. We're his children. He wants to fellowship with us. Amen. So get in his word. Listen, I challenge you this morning. Grow as a Christian. Grow. And how do you grow? You grow in God's word. We read it a while ago. Amen. Look here. Let's, uh, let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. I want to read a couple things right there. You know, it's talking about pastors and apostles and preachers and all that. God made that what for? The edification of the church in Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. He gave uh, that because they grew in the word and he said, go out, I want you to evangelize, I want you to preach and teach. Some people have different callings. The exhortation of the church for the, here it is right here. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why. Amen. So we got accountability. We got responsibility. I'm here to tell you, I, I, when I was a, a manager doing the stuff in my job, I had accountability. If it didn't work right, I was called on the carpet. <laughs> you better get it right because you're accountable and you're responsible. Amen. Look at here. Till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statues of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14. Uh, that we henceforth be no more children. See, when you're children, you're tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. See, you need to be strong in the fundamental basic things of who you are that other doctrines out there won't deceive you. Look here. <clears throat> By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I tell you right now, people are... They people out there to grab the word of God and they'll try to make it the way they want it. I don't like that part, tear that part out. This is what I believe. And all of a sudden you got a cult out there. It ain't the true gospel of Jesus. You better know who you are as a Christian. You better not let your ears get dull. Keep them open. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in what? In love may grow up into him in all things. We're growing in him, which, uh, which is the head, even Christ. We're growing in our king, praise God. Think about it. When we get to heaven, we're going to get to praise God and worship God. Isn't that going to be exciting? I, I, I just can't wait. Amen. Look here. Verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. As we unstop our ears and not be dull to the Lord and you grow in the Lord, what happens there? The body starts functioning properly. These uh, parts of the body that needs to be taken care of and until you got mature people, mature Christian, it's on meat that can fill that spot, see? That's what we as Christians want to do to make the body function properly. Amen? Praise God. And I'll tell you, it takes the whole body. It takes the whole body to make it function properly. If you don't believe it, cut off your big toe. See how unfunctional that body starts working there. You got some problem. Let's cry out to the Lord and ask him this morning. Look here. In, uh, in Hebrews 6.15, it talks about God made promises to Abraham after, the, after he patiently endured. He went through all those things. He, still, uh, 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 he stayed fast to the Lord. He obtained the promise. God has promised us something, y'all. 
In Hebrews 5, 9, I want to read that right there. It talks about the author of eternal salvation. That's our promise, is it not? That's our promise in Hebrews 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that what? Obey him. See, you got to obey him. If you love him, you'll obey him. I love him. What he says, I'm ready. I'm going to obey him. Sometimes he'll let you do something you don't like to do, but you got to do it because you're his and he loves you and he knows best. Amen. <clears throat> Let's look right here and see the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Now, let's look at 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11, talking about add to your faith. Uh, it talks right here. It says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge. Get in that word. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, uh, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. We're supposed to be kind to our brothers and sisters. And to brotherly kindness, charity. We're supposed to give and help in those areas. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, God wants us to be fruitful in the knowledge of him. Amen? Let's go a little bit further right there. Uh, uh, verse 10. But he that liketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten uh, that he was purged from his old sins. That's heavy. Let's go to the next one. Wherefore, the, uh, uh, wherefore, the rather brethren give diligently to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, you shall never fail. Man, I like that, don't you? If you do what God's called you to do, you're not going to fall, uh, fail. You're more than a conqueror because, see, your end, we know what it is. We know what our end is, is a Christian, amen. We're going to be with the Lord for eternity, praise God. So, praise God, look here. The promise of eternal inheritance in Hebrews 9, 15. I'm here to tell you, God has made you and I a promise this morning uh, uh, to be the inheritance of him, to be with him eternally, praise God. And I tell you right now, if you're a Christian, and, uh, and, and, and you haven't been studying and reading God's word and your ears have gotten dull or your heart's gotten a little hard, uh, God is crying out to you that, and asking you this morning to get it right, uh, to make a commitment uh, and come after him because he has only good stuff for you. He has only good stuff for you, praise God. The most important thing you'll ever do in your whole life is follow him and be obedient to him. And you got to get in his word. you got to do some of these things. You can't just get saved and, and, and casually sit back and say, yeah, I'm saved, I'm going. you got to do something. you got to put actions to your commitment. you got to follow him. you got to read his word. you got to pray. you got to do something. Why? The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy you. He wants to come and steal the word that's going forth this morning away from you. But if you're strong in the word and you've got your basic fundamental principles solid like a rock, you're going to walk out of here with authority. You back off. I'm going to get you, devil. Because God said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Any of your demons you sin or whatever, my God's greater. Not me, my God, your God. Amen? That's who we are. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's settled. It's done. Read the back of the Bible. Compound books of the Bible in Revelation. We win. I already know who's going to win. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. Now, I want everybody, uh, well, let me pray for the folks on the Internet. We love you so much. So glad you're here. We pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you're one of those uh, uh, that's out there that got saved and your ears have gotten dull and hearing God, I encourage you, I challenge you to get a hold of God's Word and start reading and studying every day and see your world change. You know, a prescription I always like to give folks is having problems with God. I'm going to give it to you. I, I give this prescription a lot of times. I challenge you to take the Word of God and read it seven days straight and pray and praise God seven days and then come back seven days and tell me what the results is. I challenge you 
If you're not reading God's word, I challenge you to read it seven days straight in a word, row. Do not miss a day. And you might be a morning person. You might be a night person. Whatever it is, when you can get alone with God in your closet, do it. If you're not doing it, I challenge you to do that this morning and see a change in your spiritual walk and growth with the Lord. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. That's an awesome prescription. I love to give that one out. That's a bag of prescription, by the way. Listen to this. I challenge you on the internet uh, that you'll read God's word seven days uh, <clears throat> and without fail and pray and worship him and see if uh, you're not growing spiritually in God's word. You will be. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray right now that you'll ask him to come in your heart because he loves you so much. Uh, he said, if you confess my uh, your sins, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, that rebellion against him. He'll cleanse you because he loves you, but he's got to have your heart. Uh, you give him your heart uh, and your world will change in a positive manner. You won't be on the road to destruction You'll be on the road to, uh, to greater life for righteousness with the Lord thy God because Jesus paid the price for you. His innocent blood, I challenge you, receive him as Lord of your life. And write us. Get on the internet. Look at the right-hand corner on the face page and, and put on our brother Rick. Uh, I said that prayer. I received Jesus in my heart. We want to know. We want to rejoice with you. I want to hear that. Uh, praise God uh, that he's moving up on you because he loves you. Praise God. Now I'm going to ask everybody in here. Will you please bow your head?